In this video, we're going to go over electric potential and electric potential energy. Electric potential is denoted by phi and it's given by this equation kq over r. Again, we've seen these variables several times now, Coulomb's constant, the charge, and the radius. Now, the gravitational analogy for electric potential is height. And similarly, the gravitational analogy for electric potential energy it's gravitational potential energy. So the way to understand this is, let's think about how gravity works. If you have an object at some height, that object will spontaneously fall towards a lower height when you drop it. However, an object on the ground is not going to spontaneously fly back up into the air to a higher height. The same is true for charges. Charges will move spontaneously in a certain direction, and motion in the opposite direction would be non-spontaneous. The difference again though is that for gravity, down is always spontaneous motion and up is always non-spontaneous. For charge, it's more complicated because charges can be both positive or negative. So uh, we'll look at how each of these work. So here, phi kq over r, you should note that the units for electric potential is a volt Volt is denoted by a capital V, and a volt is equivalent to a joule per coulomb. Now, electric potential energy is given by this equation, kqq over r. Now, potential energy, of course, as a form of energy, is going to have units of joules. What we are usually interested in isn't just the exact potential energy, but usually the change in potential energy. So the change in potential energy is given by Q delta phi, which can also be written as QV. Now this is pretty important because delta phi is a change in potential or a potential difference. V is voltage. So what this essentially tells you is that voltage denoted by capital V is simply a potential difference. The second important piece of information is now thinking about change in potential energy. For gravitational potential energy, an object will fall spontaneously because that involves a decrease in potential energy. So the same is true for electric potential energy. Charges will move spontaneously if that involves a decrease in the potential energy. So I'll make a note here. Charges will move spontaneously if the change in potential energy is negative. Okay, so keeping these ideas in mind, let's take a look at a couple examples then. In both of these situations, we're asking what direction will the charge move? So in the first situation, we're looking at Q, which is a positive charge, and above it is a positive charge of 5 coulombs, and below it a positive charge of 10 coulombs. So since we're dealing with a positive charge, well what we know is that in order for a charge to move spontaneously, the change in potential energy needs to be negative. Now our equation for the change in potential energy is Q delta phi. So if we want the potential energy to be negative and our charge is positive, that means the change in potential has to be negative. All right? This will be negative, uh, charge is positive, the potential energy change will be negative if the potential difference is negative. So this means that positive charges move towards lower potential positive charges move spontaneously toward lower potential. Now, for potential, even though it's both positive and negative values, a greater potential is a more positive potential, a lower potential is a more negative potential. So here, if I've had positive five and positive 10, positive 10 is gonna produce a greater electric potential around it compared to positive five, which will produce a lower electric potential around it. 
And since positive charges move towards lower electric potential, this charge is going to move up. Okay. So now let's take a look at this situation over here. Now our charge is negative, and instead of given, being given point charges, you're just told the potential at this point is negative two volts, and the potential at this point is negative three volts. So again, we can consider the equation that we want the change in potential energy to be negative for spontaneous motion. Change in potential energy is Q delta phi, and if we want the change in potential energy to be negative, when the charge is negative, that means the change in potential has to be positive. So negative charges will move towards higher potential. So I'll make that note here. Negative charges move spontaneously toward higher potential. Higher potential, of course, more positive potential. So in this case, between negative two volts and negative three volts, negative two volts is more positive. It's a higher potential. So that's the direction that this charge will move towards higher potential. Okay, so to summarize, electrical potential is analogous to height. Objects and charges will move in the direction of decreasing potential energy, and specifically, that is in the direction of lower potential for positive charges and in the direction of higher potential for negative charges.